Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Escape Forever Free. We are about to do our alone time with God. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another occasion that we can worship at your feet. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence. Please divide truth and light to all the hearers of this devotional time. And may the, the committed devotional persons be given strength and power from heaven to continue on the straight and narrow path. Lead them into all truth for their salvation, I beg, and save them all who are listening and been, been um, willing to submit to all the light they have. Save them in your kingdom, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So our devotional this morning is coming from Maranatha. And before we go to our devotional, we're going to do our memory text. Let's recite it. Our memory text comes from Exodus 19, verse 5, as it is um, coming from the quarterly covenant primer. And it says, Exodus 19, verse 5. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. Exodus 19 verse 5. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. Memory text, Exodus 19 verse 5. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Exodus 19, verse 5. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Amen. May God help us to recall this memory text to glorify his name as it's stay committed to our memory. Our devotional reading is coming from Maranatha and this morning's reading is entitled One to One. One to One Witnessing. One to one witnessing. The key text is John 3, verse 16, a Bible verse that we know quite well. John 3, verse 16 reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The reading. One to one witnessing. Why are not all who claim to love God seeking to enlighten their neighbors and their associates that they may know that they may not longer neglect this great salvation? Christ gave himself to a shameful agonizing death, showing his great travail of soul to save the perishing. Oh, Christ is able, Christ is willing, Christ is longing to save all who will come unto him. Talk to souls in peril and get them to behold Jesus upon the cross, dying to make it possible for them or for him to pardon them. Talk to the sinner with your own heart, overflowing with the tender, pitying love of Jesus Christ. Let there be deep earnestness. But not a harsh, loud note should be heard from the one who is trying to will the soul to look and live. First, have your own soul consecrated to God. As you look upon your intercessor in heaven, let your heart be broken, then softened and subdued. You can address repenting sinners as one who realizes the power of of redeeming love pray with these souls by faith bringing them to the foot of the cross carry their minds up with your mind and fix the eye of faith where you look upon jesus the sin bearer 
get them to look away from their poor sinful selves to the savior and the victory thereby will be won they behold for themselves the lamb of god that take it away the sin of the world then they see the way the truth the life the sun of righteousness sheds its bright beams into the heart the the, the strong tide of redeeming love pours into the parched and thirsty soul and the sinner is saved to jesus christ christ crucified talk it pray it sing it and it will break and win hearts this is a power and wisdom of god to gather souls for christ formal set phrases the presentation of merely argumentative subjects is productive of little good the melting love of god in the hearts of the workers will be recognized by those for whom those workers labor souls are thirsting for the waters of life believers do not be empty cisterns. If you reveal the love of Christ to those that you seek, you may lead the hungering, thirsting ones to Jesus, and he will give them the bread of life and the water of salvation. Amen. This morning's devotional reminds us that we are to take the gospel and a one-on-one -on -one approach in addition to our, la to our last devotional guide, which encourages us to take it host to host and family by family. We are to thirst and hunger for souls as if it is that our own lives depend upon it. We are to seek the lost and we are to try to bring them in to truth and light and everlasting life. We are to look at them as a special treasure of God. God so loved all of us that he gave his only begotten son to die for our sins. So too we are to bear the burden and the cross of saving souls with Jesus Christ. Will you take up that cross today? Will you allow your life to reflect the glory of God so that the persons that we seek after will truly believe and will come? Will you avail yourself to be possessed by the Holy Spirit and to be directed by heaven's throne room? Will you, with our God and our heavenly host, be among the reapers of those that are going to enter into the pearly gates? This morning's, this morning's devotion challenges us to take the gospel personally and to seek after souls and to minister to them one and one. Will you go? Let us sing our meditation or song as we think about the love of God and how this love, if we allow it to possess us, can be a magnificent tool in making it easy, the task of winning souls for heaven. Consider this love. The song is number 184, Jesus Paid It All. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. In his left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Since nothing good have I, whereby thy grace to claim, I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's lamb. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow, and 
And when before the throne we stand in him complete, we'll lay our trophies down, all down at Jesus' feet. For Jesus paid it all, and all to him we owe. Though sin had left a crimson stain, he washes it white as snow. Amen. This morning, you are invited to allow Jesus to wash your stains of sin as white as snow. If you have never come before, come. If you have come already and you've been calling, yourself a Christian professing to be a follower of Christ, feed his lamb. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the word of truth and light. In such a time as this, it is very timely. Empower us now who have come already to go and feed your lamb. One and one evangelism. Yesterday we spoke about house to house, family by family. Help us, Jesus, to do this great work because indeed the time is upon us and it is very short. Father, for those in the hearing of this prayer who will go and do what they were called to do according to the commission of the professed saints, Father, for, for the professed saints, Father, empower us, we pray, to go and do this dutiful um, work for you. For those who have never come, oh Jesus, reach out to our heart this morning. Cause the heart to go into deep reflection. Send your Holy Spirit to help in that process and convict somebody that they need to come to you and to serve you wholeheartedly with full surrender. Empower us professed people to have the love of God within us so that this love can shine forth as the greatest testimony to those who we bid to come and drink of your everlasting spring of water. In Jesus' name I beg. Amen. Please. Go if you are professing Christianity. Please come if you will drink of this water that gives everlasting life. Salvation is for you too. And God is waiting with open arms to receive you. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Walk good, but above all, walk with God.